This is Accessory to Success, a website for business leaders and a place you can find the right business book at the right time and a place for business book authors as well. Today we are reviewing I Love Capitalism, a book summary of the American story of Ken Langone. Main takeaway for this book, Ken Langone's I Love Capitalism shows how a boy from a working class Long Island came to co-found the Home Depot, as well as the lessons he learned to get there. Much of Langone's success hinges on cultivating relationships and working hard to make sure that every need is being met. What you'll learn. Finding ways to make money is as easy as looking around. Take initiative and work hard. Success in sales is built on looking for a customer's long-term needs instead of pursuing a sale. Langone's customer service policy is to engage in honest, forthright communication even during difficult conversations. Capitalism rewards those who work the hardest, bring in the most business, and have the best ideas. Customers are people, and their needs are the top priority. Under promise and over deliver. Always look for opportunities. Hard work pays double. The book summary. I Love Capitalism, an American Story is an autobiographical work describing how Ken Langone found success on Wall Street and beyond. The values that Langone would build his unique style on were built in his childhood. Through his education at Bucknell and New York University, Langone refined his style and learned about what he would spend the rest of his life doing, building businesses. During his career on Wall Street, he applied hard work, honest communication, and customer service, which were ultimately successful. His co-founding The Home Depot came later in his career, and it is clear that Langone's values directly contributed to the home improvement store's success. The book opens with a description of Langone's childhood as the son of a plumber and cafeteria worker. The examples his parents provided were great influence in Langone's decisions and his approach to life. He described his father traveling to find plumbing jobs instead of waiting to be called to a job site. One winter, as an 11-year-old, Langone used money earned delivering papers to purchase wreaths. He strung the wreaths on a broomstick paid a friend to help, and they began selling the wreaths door to door. This is one example of a young Ken Langone taking initiative and working hard to achieve the goal of making money. These stories and others remind me of the book about Jack Ma's rise in building Alibaba. His mother emphasizes anticipating others' needs and always encouraging him to get an education. In his youth, Langone was so busy working all his side jobs that he did not spend much time on academics. This point on parenting is drilled down extremely well in the book, Grit. At first, Langone was resistant to further education. He was ready to get to work. After persuasion from friends, he started taking classes at Bucknell. One of his economic professors saw through some of the worst English he'd ever seen to recognize Langone had a very good understanding of the concepts. The book also describes some mischievousness that nearly resulted in his expulsion from Bucknell. In combination, these experiences were were a turning point. He began prioritizing his education, which he would continue by earning a Master's of Business Administration degree through taking night classes at New York University. To find out what causes a change like this, you might read the book The Tipping Point. One of the reasons he gives his success is a thirst for knowledge. According to Langone, understanding how different businesses work is important when determining which companies to invest in. The book continues telling the story of Langone's rise in Wall Street and beyond, and Langone attributes his success to building relationships, forthright communication in customer service, and the marriage of initiative and hard work. In combination, these values made Langone an incredible salesman, with a talent for finding unconventional solutions to complicated problems. Another book to this end would be about Warren Buffett, The Life Lessons and Rules for Success. Langone repeated twice in his book that he is not self-made. He achieved success because people offered him opportunities. 
Cultivating and maintaining relationships was one of the most important skills anyone can develop, he argues. For more on this, definitely read the book How to Win Friends and Influence People. Communicating honestly and without pretense is another important skill for everyone, as this is what helped set Langone apart. He did not want to waste anyone's time, and he wanted to make deals happen. Condensed, these strategies mean that people are unique individuals with needs instead of the means to an end. Langone was successful because he listened to these needs and worked to meet them. Ben Franklin shares his view, and you can read more about his life and perspective in the book Benjamin Franklin and American Life. To build on these relationships, Langone valued initiative, innovation, and hard work. During his time at R.W. Pressbridge, Langone took initiative finding companies that had not yet been approached by an equity firm. An attraction to innovation always helped Langone find out which companies would achieve success. In everything, Langone worked to go above and beyond for anyone who engaged his services and friendship. Hard work is what made that possible. As these ideas came together, they help explain the Home Depot's success. One of the Home Depot's core competencies is good customer service, which means listening to the customer's problems to find the best solution instead of throwing products at the customer. When these customers' service was threatened by numbers-driven CEO Robert Nardelli, Langone helped initiate a change in leadership. Employees are encouraged to take initiative like asking customers if any assistance would be helpful. Langone emphasized that the employee's hard work is responsible for the Home Depot's success. For more details on taking initiative at work, reading the book Lynchpin would be recommended. I Love Capitalism, an American story, catalogs Langone's relationship-centric values and how they helped him achieve success. From an early age, Langone learned the importance of working hard, looking for opportunities, and communicating with honesty. While there were some bumps along the way, the ability to solve problems with creative solutions and a wide network of allies made it possible for Langone to snatch victory from seemingly inevitable bankruptcy. About the author, Ken Langone has consistently been featured in Forbes 400 Wealthiest Americans list since 1999 after co-founding the Home Depot and founding venture capital firm Invent. He has also served as president of R.W. Pressbridge, president and chief executive officer of GeekNet, and executive vice president of Electronic Data Systems. The boards Langone has been a part of include Unify, Micelle Technologies, GeekNet, Yum Brands, General Electric, the New York Stock Exchange, and many more. In addition to his corporate success, Langone has made philanthropic donations to many organizations, including the New York University School of Medicine, Bucknell University, the Boys Club of New York, Harlem Children's Zone, the Animal Medical Center, and the Catholic Church. The New York University School of Medicine is now known as NYU Langone Health, after his $100 million gift. Monetary gifts aside, Langone has donated his time and expertise by sitting on the boards of the Harlem Children's Zone, St. Patrick's Cathedral, and Horatio Alger Society Foundation and the Promise Academy. While working full-time in Wall Street, Langone completed a Master of Business Administration from New York University by taking night classes. He also earned a Bachelor of Arts degree from Bucknell University. This has been a book summary of I Love Capitalism, an American story by Ken Langone. This is Accessory to Success. Thanks for listening to this summary. There are many other book recommendations in this book summary. Feel free to go to the blog post to find links to all of those. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you in the next review.